Hi there everybody, it's UK independent demonstrator Halsey here from slimandstylish.com. Thank you very much for joining me today. I've already got it loaded over on my iPad with the ads, that's what that was blasting out, so that I didn't have to go and look for it today, it was already. Thought it would cut a few seconds off the start of my video, so how are you all? Hi Audrey! Audrey you made me laugh yesterday, you really did. Hiya Karen! Bit of a different one today, um, I'm playing with the kitchen salt. <laughs> but I love the effect that salt has when you watercolour, because it obviously just soaks up all of the liquid and it, it's it's a lovely effect so this is what it's done and hopefully you can see I've played with three different reinkers on this card so I've used um, Highland Heather, Pool Party and Balmy Blue and I've used them on all of the um, snowflakes so what I've done is got the snowflake set here ready to go but I have actually put tasteful touches just to the side and thought if we get some time at the end we'll have a go on one of these. What you'll need for this technique is some Whisper White cardstock, you'll need some ink, now I'm using Smoky Slate ink, you don't particularly want to be using a black ink because while it's nice to have a bit of depth in the colour the black ink will wash out the salt wash. Hi Cindy, hope you're okay. You're also going to need some glue. I've chosen the fine tip glue pen because my snowflakes are quite thin but if you're using a fatter stamp or a fatter background feel free to use your liquid glue but um, I'm using fine tip glue for this. Hiya Colleen, oh I hope you're okay. I haven't seen you for ages. Hope you're all right. So for today, I'm just using the one stamp, so I'm using this one up here. It's a really simple one um, to use. You don't want to have anything that's too ornate and fussy. I will give you the heads up as why. Once we've stamped this, we're going to pop the glue over the lines, and that's what's going to stick the salt down. So if you use something fussy like this one, you then have to go through all of the lines and bits and pieces with the salt. So help yourself out to start off with and choose a simple stamp. Oh, that's okay. I'm just glad you're all right. I was going to message you actually because I was like, oh, I haven't seen Colleen for a bit. The sentiment I'm using is may your season sparkle, but we don't need that for a bit. So I'm just going to start off with our first piece of Whisper White card stuff. And I will say, as with normal watercolour, you're probably best to have either some kitchen roll or loo roll next to you so that you can uh, wipe up any spills and also I've just put one sheet of grid paper down rather than a pad because uh, I don't want to risk ruining all my grid papers you're probably best just to rip one off when you're doing watercolour. Hiya Norma, hope you're okay. Hiya Shirley. Hiya honeybee. Morning everybody or afternoon. So I'm going to be using the smoky slate ink. I mean any of the inks would you could do, you could use um, a blue or a purple, I didn't because I was already putting blue and purple on here so it just depends what sort of background you want but I'm going with Smoky Slate. Hi Belinda! So I'm just going to stamp my stamp all over. You can use this technique for loads of different cards and you can use loads of different colours and get different effects. And it's great if you're doing sort of background, you know, if you're trying to do horizons. Um, I did one a few years ago. Do you remember the horses stamp set that we used to have? Um, I did one with the horses and I did all of the background. So it looked like the sun was coming up behind the hills using um, salt, just because it's really, it makes watercolouring quite easy. Hiya Karen, hope you're alright. That's okay, I don't do attendance sheets. <laughs> Looking forward to our party in a couple of weeks time. Um, 
my team of Stamping Bells, we're having a party that's hosted by um, Karen Tilly that's on. She's doing a mystery stamping party for us before and I've never been to mystery stamping so I'm quite looking forward to that because quite a few people are talking about that. So I've got a piece of, this is just scrap copier paper, any sort of paper will do and I fold it in half and half, the same as if you use an embossing powder, you know, to collect the bit that falls off. Um, the only thing is with this is when you collect the salt you don't want to put it back into the salt shaker because you don't particularly want this to go on your food. So fine tip glue pen. Hi I'm Wendy, hope you're okay. Honeybee's just done a mystery stamping. I'm looking forward to it. Karen um, has done it quite a few times and she gets really excited by it and I haven't done it so uh, I'm really looking forward to that night. We all know which one of us is going to mess it up. It's going to be me, obviously. So you want to use your fine tip glue pen on your snowflakes. So I'm just going to do one to start off with. And you want to cover the whole area. And it doesn't matter if you go out the lines, but you do want to make sure that you get every bit. And this is why it's better to use a simple stamp because you will be able to tell which bits you've missed. We were just discussing before I come onto this live what we were gonna have for tea. And um, my brother had just suggested fish and chips. And I said, no, because I knew that I'd stolen all the salt. <laughs> So when you're using your fine tip glue pen, put your lid back on pretty quickly because it's a nightmare if that gets bunged up. Voice of experience. So I've got some of the leftover salt that I was using earlier, but I have got my trusty salt shaker in case it's needed later. And I'm just going to pop that all over my snowflake. And I make sure it's stuck to each part. So it looks like a kind of fancy embossing. I've missed a bit just there. Okay. Now you do want to keep tapping the back of this to make sure that all the loose salt is off. Okay, so it looks like raised and embossed. So you just want to do that to all your snowflakes. So I'm going to go across and do that now. And I'm going to keep switching the paper. I've got two pieces of copier paper on here so I don't get into a mess because you know I don't cope very well with mess. <laughs> we did this. I used to work in a, um, in a school when I was at university. I did before and after school club. And we used to do the salt technique in the school and it was infant and primary, so it was sort of um, ages four to ten. Oh, we used to get into a right mess. But it was okay at school because it wasn't your carpets and it wasn't your desk. So the cleaner must have hated me, but... <laughs> there we are. If kids don't have fun and get messy, they're not going to enjoy it, are they? Oh Shirley, you've just bought the fine tip glue pen. Yeah, you can use this for so much. One of my favourite things to do with the fine tip glue pen isn't to use it as glue, it's to use it as like a gloss over the top. So when you do your, um, your stamping and then you blend, if you pop a load of Winker Stella over it so it's nice and glittery, and then use the fine tip glue pen over the top, it gives it like a varnish and it goes really shiny um, and if you're doing glasses like some of our sets at the moment if you use the whiskey set for instance and you do it over the liquid part it looks really realistic and it gives it a really nice shine yeah it, it's a bit like glossy accents um, 
I know you can get the different glossy accents that has the glitter in and everything. This is just plain. But yes, it does dry like it. The only thing I will say is if you're going to use it like I've just said and like you would glossy accents so that it's over the top um, and it makes everything look better, have um, your piercing tool near it because you don't want any air bubbles in it. So as soon as you notice an air bubble come in, and that's normally when you use it quicker, if you go slow you shouldn't get any, but if you do get any air bubbles, you just want to pop those before it dries because it does sort of ruin the effect. And I'm going to go and pop my salt on now because I've done three and I don't want the glue to dry. Pop my trusty lid on. many people that have salt on um, their food and their fish and chips and everything knows that it sparkles really nice. It's really glittery salt. Now I'm using fine salt, just like normal table shaker salt, but you can use um, if you're like a rock salt person, you can use rock salt. It just, it's grainier, so it doesn't look as fluid, but you can still use it. Okay, so. Pop that to the side and bring the next bit back. apologize in advance if I drop that salt there's going to be some really bad language on, <laughs> on this YouTube video <laughs> can you imagine it would be everywhere it's like embossing powder but at least you can put that straight back into the uh, into the jar um no I don't think so Colleen this this glue has been around since I joined um and I've been at stamping up three years now so Maybe it was new that year. People in Europe had a bit of a problem with it um, about a year and a half ago when Stampin' Up! had its uh, customs problems. This got stuck in customs and it was some time before people in Europe I know could get it. Um, and I know that from experience because Karen, who's on the call, um, Tilly, she lost hers. I don't know whether it was an event or something, but yeah, she lost hers and she was waiting for ages for it to come back into stock because um, we couldn't get any liquids. You could add glitter for sparkle, Jeanette, you could. Um, and I normally, if I use this as sort of a varnish over the top I normally do add a load of Wink of Stella but for this because I'm going to be using the reinkers over the top of the salt it will just hide the glitter a little bit but you could always try adding it afterwards that would be a really nice effect I hadn't really thought about that but that would look good um, there we go I'm trying to see if I've I've got it all I think I have So all over that one. Just in customs now. <laughs> yeah. So, there we are. When I said I thought I got it all, <laughs> I had missed. You see? Thank you, lid on. It is, it's such such a small little hole on the front. Oh no, I need it back on to put that, no, oh, I've got confused. Um, it is such a fine hole on the fine tip glue pen that if it does, if it does get bunged up, it really is, you can't, 
you struggle even to fit like a sewing needle down to, to free it back up. Thank you, Audrey. I'm glad you're here. Okay. You just need to keep tapping and tapping because the salt will stick on there and you don't want to have any loose bits when you come on with your watercolour pens. So give it a good tap. And there you go. Very cheap alternative to embossing. When you use the embossing powders though, you can't or you struggle to put watercolour ink over the top because, you know, it kind of... It rubs off because it is water based. You're better with one of our blends or our watercolour pencils and not adding the water and just scratching them in. So for this one, I'm using Highland Heather and I've got the reinker there, Pool Party and Balmy Blue. Okay, and I've got my aqua marker as well. So I'm just going to pop a couple of dots of each onto the blocks. Um, I use my blocks, you used to be able to use the old um, ink pads which I miss, I miss using the old ink pads but the new ink pads just look neater and a lot sturdier so I won't complain too much so I just use my blocks and then they're dead easy just to throw them in a soapy bowl afterwards to wash. Okay, so the salt's obviously a crystal, so as soon as you add a little bit of water to it, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of water to my Eureka, and I'm going to bring this up to the camera so you can see. Okay, as soon as you add it to the salt, and it's nice and wet, it is just going to spread. Okay. So I need to put a dot in each section and it's spread already. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the centre of all of my snowflakes. Okay, so hopefully you can see it's like... I'm just... I'm going to make that one a bit darker in a minute, but you just pop it in the... Pop it up to the crystals. And something will just fly down. Some you might need to pop another couple of dots, but it just, whoo. What is also fun with salt is if you're doing watercolour, you know when you wet the paper, so you know when you're using our old brush um, or any of the crystal -y type colours, or if you just, if you just get the ink on your aqua marker and you rub it over watercolour paper, right you get a huge puddle on your watercolor paper and you drop the salt crystals in it will actually crystallize I'll show you in a minute I've got some watercolor paper somewhere um, but that's always a cool trick to do with salt and you can just build the darkness up with this and I am just doing the centers okay for the watercolour aqua markers, I'm going to use my chamois. I'm just going to, once you've wiped it, just have a little push on it as well to get the water out because sometimes the water that's actually in the nib will stay with that colour. So pull party now. Get it to the colour you want. I think I'm going to want it a little bit darker. It's better to start off lighter and then keep adding your dots because uh, you always make it darker that way. Okay, and I'm just going to pop that where the Highland Heather finishes to start off with. I am going to go a little bit over the Highland Heather as well. Okay, so hopefully you can, it's a bit 
awkward being on my table but I'm hoping you can you can see that it's just going I'm holding it up here so I know that I'm um, shaking but I'm, I'm hoping it's a bit easier for you to see It also works um, really nice actually if it's on basic black and you've used Whisper White, um, you know our craft white ink. So we do um, the Whisper White ink. If you use this on basic black, you need to wait for the white to dry. It takes a bit more time to dry than our normal inks. But if you wait for that to dry and then glue your salt on top, you can get really nice, you can do nice fireworks and things like that. So that's always a good one to, uh, can you tell that? That was definitely a school activity, the fireworks on the black. <laughs> but. Okay. I think it's very much like that snowflake paper that we've got at the moment. The one that goes with this snowflake splendor sweep because that uses these colors sort of in the same sort of technique but on a flat dsp so this just gives it you and hopefully you can see it it's quite 3d now it's sticking up quite a bit off the card and you just keep if there's a bit that just goes a bit lighter than you'd like just keep topping over the top oh thank you wendy that's really lovely of you and it's just shared on Facebook. Thank you. Right, wipe the pool party off and then balmy blue for the end. And again, I'm just going to push a little bit of water through so that it's definitely empty. It's probably not as important when you're going light to dark, but when you're going dark to light, that's definitely important. Okay, so once you've got your balmy blue, just at the end. And if you don't like how a bit's fell, so if you think to yourself you'd like a little bit more, um, I don't know, if you're looking here and thinking, oh, I'd have liked balmy blue down here, you can add it to the salt and it will just change the colour of the salt. So the darker colour will win at the end, so you can just pop it over the top. I'm just going to chase that through and mix the pool party and the balmy blue together. how you make all of them and it doesn't take too long to dry either so this will be pretty much ready as soon as I finished it to stick down good and for the Ray, the reason why I'd use smoky slate at the base was because any bits that I've missed with the salt and the glue will actually look in keeping with this but won't stand out massively. If you'd have used memento for instance it would have been painfully obvious and everybody would have been able to see. Just adding a bit more onto the bits that fell lightly so I can just darken it up a bit. There we go. And it's totally 3D. So it looks like, you know, that sort of puff paint that you get and you pop on, but just a lot simpler. The Holly stamp. Um, yeah, you could do that. Uh, 
Yeah, because you could do the berries different colours on the leaves. You just have to make sure that the salt wasn't really touching. If you've got something that's detailed, Cindy, you want to be careful because if you pop the red on the berries and it's right next to the salt that's on the green leaves, you're going to have a mixture in the middle. So you just want to make sure there's a gap of the glue between the two salted bits. But yeah, it should look quite nice. So let me just um, grab a piece of watercolour paper so you can see what I was talking about earlier. Okay. I'm just going to If you just wet all your paper down, like you would for normal watercolours. I mean, normally I'd stick watercolour paper down so that it, it stays straight, but get it nice and wet. And then just drop all your inks on and make sure it's very, very wet. Hopefully you can see that that's, that's really wet. And I'm hoping you can see what happens when I sprinkle the salt on. And does that show up very well? But it's kind of crystallised on top. So not only has it got a cool effect, but it's crystallised. And then if I just grab my tissue. And dry it off. You've kind of got those crystals then in it. Probably show up better on a darker colour but that's what you can do with salt on a watercolour piece of paper. There's lots of different tricks because it absorbs the ink so well. So I'm just gonna, where's my lid? I'm just gonna use my chamois um, and I'm just gonna pop those upside down on there they're scaring me being a bit wet and everything else there we go I've just tried to shut that with the blocks in <laughs> I'm such a donut I was reading the comments so uh, there we go hi creative art with me oh thank you we've we've glued the snowflakes and we put the salt on the snowflakes and we've um we've then watercolored it so I've got a piece of Whisper White here. This is four centimetres by 10.2 centimetres, which is the same width as my card. And I've got my sentiment here, May Your Season Sparkle. Hi, Elizabeth, hope you're okay. Thanks for joining. I'll do another one with this technique in a minute because um, I want to have a go with a, a different stamp set. So may your season sparkle now with the um the salt on here you might find that your dimensionals don't stick perfect so what you're better to do which is something that i don't usually do is i'm going to pop the dimensionals onto the card base first so i'm going to find a bit where there's gaps and stick them that way Hi Carol, hope you're okay. So I'm just going to pop the dimensionals on like that. So I'm going to pop this sentiment a little bit higher so it's up there. Because um, as I've put my card down on the sheet of paper, I got wet. Look, it's soaked through. So I'm just going to pop a piece of... Um, pop my sentiment over the top of that. And we won't see it. I'm all for hiding up the mistakes. <laughs> so may your season sparkle. Okay, and then I'm just going to apply it to my card base. So I've got my Tombow. You can hear it crackling as I've put the <laughs> salt down towards the table. It's like crackling <laughs> so there's my card 
do you think? Should we have a go with a tasteful touches set and try the same technique? I'm dying to try those little boxes. So I'm just going to grab another piece of grid paper because that one's wet and salty. And then we can go again. So for anyone not knowing, by the way, don't look how dirty my desk is. It gets, I've had the laptop on it from work and it's took all the uh, shine off the wood. So a piece of grid paper again. Our grid paper's just great. You get a huge load. I mean, that one there, I've been demonstrating now three years and trust me, I get it dirty and everything else and I'm still on the same pad of grid paper. So there's loads of it. So tasteful touches this time and I'm going to use the squares at the top and I'm going to see if I can get all the squares going in different colours. Just I don't know if it will work. The snowflakes worked really well. I'm not sure if this one will but we, the only way we can find out is by trying. Yeah true I'd rather yes salt over glitter but <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do this any any particular way. I think I'm just going to keep twisting. And just get a nice... And I think, was it Cindy who said about adding um, Winky Stella on the end over the top? I think I'm going to give that a try. Okay. So, again... I've got my piece of scrap paper, my fine tip glue pen, and now I'm not sure whether to go, I was thinking will I do the whole square or will I just do the lines of the square and I'm thinking I'm going to do the whole square. Yeah, I'm going to do the whole square. You watch when I next look at my screen, there'll be lots of comments saying, just do the outside bit. <laughs> I've gone with the full square. Oh, my lid. I just thought if I do each square at a time. Oh, that actually looks really good. Do you know what it's like? Um, do you remember the embossing? Well, no, do you remember the embossing paste? We still get it. But if you do that with um, our stencils, it kind of looks like that. Maybe that's a good idea. Do a mixture. We'll do these ones as squares and then those ones as round the square. good when I first thought about doing this technique the first set that I wanted to play with with it was the snowflakes and then 
saw this one on the shelf with the little squares and thought I bet that would look pretty good too so I'm managing to get them both done in one video so these two are just the outline of the square And this one here is going to be just the outline of the square as well. Don't forget, if any of you try this technique, please share your picture over on Slim and Stylish's Crafty Hangout. Karen has set up um, an album for us because I still don't have access to my own group. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's set access up in there. So there's an album, just go and pop your makes in there. I'd love to see them. Oh, I missed a square. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> I'll come back and get that one. I missed a bit of my snowflake, I missed the square. So let's just grab that on. And this one here I do do fall again. Cindy. There must be like a health benefit message here. Everyone keeps telling you how bad salt is for your body. We could do some sort of advertisement like it's not bad for your body. It's bad for your body, put it on paper sort of thing. Salt companies should get behind it for publicity. <laughs> full one and I've done it as a part one. Lid on the glue. Okay. What colours do we think? Do we think the same colours or should we go nice and bright? thinking nice and bright so that they look all completely differently. Um, let's have a look. Melon Mambo. Um, Bermuda Bay. And then shall I put a pull of yellow with it? Daffodil Delight do you reckon? Oh Granny Apple Green, okay. There we are, Granny Apple Green. So, Melon Mambo, Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green. Um, your blocks all nice and clean because they've been sat on my, uh, my chamois. There we go. And I'm just going to run this through my chamois again to make sure that... Um, It's nice and clean. I don't want to be pulling through Highland Heather. And then I know it's pretty obvious with the bright colours, but I am going to pop the reinker directly behind the block that it is, so that I know which one I. Otherwise, we you know we're all going to get into a mess. <laughs> Bermuda Bay. Tell you what else it would look nice if you do you know the swirly frame stamp set where you've got the um circular frame and the square frame you get the frame in all different colors i could be doing this all night couldn't i really okay so go with granny apple 
for brain first. Do you reckon I ought to do each square fully green or mix the colours? I think I'm going to mix and match. So to anyone who missed earlier, when you pop the watercolour onto the sole, you only need to really just touch it and it runs quite nicely. It's nice and quick and simple to do. You only need to touch the top bit and it all goes. And you can go back over it to make it darker. Uh, just plain whisper white. It's a thin whisper white as well, Carol. If you're not using loads of water, um, Thin Whisper White's normally, I think, quite adequate for it. So I'm just going to add that in. Oh, that Bermuda Bay goes well. I might just try and get it just a little bit lighter if I'm going to pop it with the grit. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I've mixed both the light and the dark there. Daft. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry if my screen froze. Um, it came up to tell me I was a bit out of battery so what I did in the meantime was make the blue a little bit lighter so you can see the difference between the two and then another mambo again I'm just gonna make that a little bit lighter on the side think I was seduced by the squares and the fun effect you could get with running this around the square but I actually preferred the uh, the snowflakes So I've got very much pink on that. Um, so mix a few of these so the squares are all different. So that's the snowflakes and I think it worked better where you could run one colour over another. This one looks a bit disjointed whereas that one works really really well. So that's that's my preference. Keep a combined stamp. <laughs> but let's finish this one up. So put the stamp case somewhere there it is. onto a scrap piece of Whisper White and I'm going to use the Smoky Slate. 
Oh, thanks, Wendy. See you soon. just the outer petal lines of the flower with the fine tip glue. I'm not doing the inside of the petal, I'm just doing the lines. determined to use up all the salt that I knocked out the salt shaker because there's nothing else I can really do with it. <laughs> I'm no good at threading needles either, so I'm terrible at putting a lid on that. Okay, where's my salt? Yeah, it's a snowflake for me as well. I am, um, I'm determined I'm gonna save this for this flower. <laughs> determined. So it's a bit like the poppy set now. You know where you have the frame around the poppy? So I've now got the frame around the flower. I am realising, by the way, this is going to be really fun to fussy cut once I've done this because all the salt will be uh, layered quite thick. But Just run the red through. Red, it's melon mambo. Really is so lazy watercolour, and the salt just does it all for you. <laughs> it would look pretty good actually if I started out with some petal pink and then merged it like I did the snowflakes but we're going to work with this There's a little bit of gap and fussy cut out I'm feeling I really should have stopped after the snowflakes but you never know do you until you try One of my, um, oh, sorry everybody, it's coming up to that time where my phone's telling me I've got 20% battery, 5% battery, <laughs> so, um, oh, bye Colleen, oh, I'm so glad you've got You've been able to use it. Wish him happy second birthday from all of us. Sorry, um, I was saying before I froze that um, I wish I'd stopped after the snowflake. But you don't know, do you, until you try. And I was really, really looking forward to playing with the boxes and thinking that would work as well. It did not. But... 
like I said, you do not know until you give it a shot. So what sentiment have we got? The good things are better with you. That's quite nice, isn't it? thank you as well because even though I wasn't sure I'm still not sure about my squares as opposed to my snowflakes um I much prefer the outline squares and I do the block squares so that was a good suggestion so the good things are better with you can go down there and I'm going to do it again where I pop the uh dimensionals onto the card first so I can tailor them around where the salt is or isn't. Load it up with Wink Stella. So that's all glittery. Uh, it's not as not as bad as I thought it would be, but I, I do prefer the snowflakes. The snowflakes are more me, I think. Which one do you all think? Are you all snowflakes as well? I'm glad you've all enjoyed the technique and have found it fun. Using the Winker Stella brushes just loosened off some of that um, salt. thank you makes me feel better about pursuing the squares <laughs> oh Karen's a favourite favor of the squares well honeybee likes the squares but not the flower I thought the flower would attract a little bit from the squares but personal preferences I suppose probably would have been better in like a pale pink maybe um, Karen Tilly, I like them both at the squares. Some Karen, snow, Karen Brady snowflakes, yeah, I like. I think I prefer the snowflakes. I, I don't mind how this has come out. When I started it, I was like, I think I'm going to hate it, but there we go. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you for all the lovely comments. If you have enjoyed it, please do give me a thumbs up before you leave. And I'll see you next week, four o'clock again on Sunday. And if you do do the project please pop into slim and stylish's crafty hangout and add it to the albums okay i will see you all next week have a lovely week everybody speak to you all soon bye